welcome to your solstice flow. Uh, before we kind of get going, I picked a Universe Has Your Back card, and today's card is the universe works fast when I'm having fun, which is very perfect for um, the summer. And today is the day where the daylight is the longest of the day and of the whole year, and it is the shortest night. And so even though in all of the brightness, it's also a moment where the sun and the moon come into perfect stillness. So this will be a very dynamic practice uh, this evening. And I invite you within that dynamic energy of the practice, and it will be solar and a little bit fiery, to find the still point of centeredness. So let's start on a block or two. And depending on how your knees are and also your feet, I'm gonna use two blocks because my knees aren't the happiest. Go ahead and stack one or two blocks, curl your toes under so that your inner ankles are hugging onto the blocks. Then let your tailbone descend down towards the floor. Let your palms come onto your lap, palms face up or down, depending if you need to receive some energy tonight or to ground. And then take the heads of the arm bones back. Have your chin parallel to the floor. And even into this first shape, there's already a little bit of fire beginning to start as you actively hug your inner ankles onto the blocks. And then either let your eyes steady to one spot or go ahead and close your eyes entirely. And as you take this first variation of hero's pose of Virasana, just take a moment to let your body get still for just a moment before we start to move it around and shape shift not only the body, but also the breath and perhaps your mind. See if you can stretch your breath out here just a little bit by lengthening your inhale and extending your exhale. And then as you remain seated on your block with the inner ankles hugging onto your block, I invite you to stay close to your breath and on your next inhale, go ahead and take your arms wide, blink your eyes open if they were closed and reach up. Then as you exhale, take your arms out to shoulder height. Pause here, take a deep breath in, and then twist to the right as you exhale. Your left palm will come onto your right thigh, but depending on how many blocks you're sitting on, your right fingertips may or may not touch the floor and that's just fine. But actively reach your right fingertips down to the floor. With every inhale, think to lift your heart away from your belly, and then exhale, use your left hand to deepen your twist. Then keep squeezing the block with your inner ankles. See if you can keep the depth of the rotation of your body, and then float your left hand, maybe your right hand if it was touching something, so that you're only relying on the strength of your core to revolve your body. And still with every inhale, grow tall. Can you twist a little deeper as you exhale? And then inhale, come back to center, reach your arms nice and wide. Exhale, go to the other side, twist to the left. Big inhale, sit tall, draw your shoulders back. Exhale, revolve to the left. So chin parallel to the floor. And then use your right hand to leverage the depth of your twist. Then see if you can keep the depth of your twist and then float your right hand in the air, maybe your left hand if it's not already there. So we've got this really strong sense of intentionality of hugging everything to the midline. The ankles hug the block, the inner thighs hug in, belly to spine. But can you still expand your breath out as you twist a little deeper? And then inhale, come back to center, palms reach up. Stay right here for the exhale, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Then inhale, reach all the way up. Exhale, bring your palms down the midline. And then come forward onto all fours. So if you have your blocks 
I'm going to invite you actually to set one block at the front edge of your mat and the other at the back. Come on to all fours, spread your fingers wide, place the tops of your feet to the floor, and then from here, flip actually the tops of your hands down, fingers point towards your knees, and then lean back to get a nice stretch into your wrists and your forearms. And you are welcome to stay in stillness or go ahead and gently rock a little bit forward and back. Just being kind to your wrists. We're going to be on them just a little bit. Not a lot, but a little. And then from here, you're going to release. Still fingers point in the direction of your knees, but now the palms are on your sticky mat. And once again, lean back, either holding in stillness or gentle rocks forward and back. Breathing here. Keep your belly drawing in and up. Just about one more breath here. All right, and then go ahead and shake them out if you need. Grab the block that's at the front of your mat. I'm gonna spin around this way. Take your block to your ankle or sort of your calf, depending. If you've got a foam block, that'll be easier for you to squeeze. And then you're gonna squeeze your right heel up towards your sitting bones that you're sandwiching your block there, hands underneath your shoulders, and then lift your right leg up as high as you can. So the intention here is to not drop the block. And if you do, just put it right back there and let's take some circles, so some little hip mandalas. Draw your right knee down, take it out to the side, keep squeezing the block, and then lift your knee up as high as you can go, and then go again. So we'll do three circles in each direction, trying to draw as big of circle as you can with your knee. And if your right hamstrings are starting to cramp already, you are in good company. Keep pressing your weight equal into both of your hands. And then after your third one, come to a neutral one and take little pulses with your right heel pulsing up. Keep squeezing your block. Oh, hello, hamstrings. We're gonna find a good balance of strengthening and stretching the hamstrings tonight. And then from here, pause, curl your left toes under, lift into a three-legged downward facing dog, keep your hips square, and then three more circles each direction. Doesn't matter which way you go first because we'll get to both. Draw your hip mandalas with your right knee, keep squeezing the block with your ankle. It'll feel really good when we stretch it out afterwards, I promise. But we do so much in yoga to stretch out the hamstrings and it's really important to cultivate the balance of strength. Go the other way if you haven't switched already. This is the last part, I promise. <laughs> but the hamstring strength will serve you in your practice tonight. And then after your third one with your right knee pointing up, pause. Look forward, gently place your left knee onto the floor, lower your right knee, and then just let that block go, or maybe let it fall, and then let's switch sides. So you'll take the block to your calf or ankle on the left, and then squeeze it towards your hip. Lift your left knee up, and then start to draw circles, hip mandalas, and so as you're aiming to Squeeze the block here. And try to go slow. And yes, you are strengthening the hamstrings, but we're also working into the hips here, both mobility and stability. And after your three rounds, switch directions, go the other way. If your block slips, just put it right back. Whew. Keeping your belly to your spine and focusing on the flow of your breath. And then after your third one, come back to neutral and little pulses with your knee. If you need to fix your block, fix your block, but keep pulsing for three, two, one, pause, curl your right toes under, lift up into your three-legged dog, and one more time. If you need to fix your block before you do so like I do, go ahead and take your hip mandalas, keep squeezing the block. Try to draw as big of circles with your knee as you can. After you've done three in one direction, then switch sides. And here in your down dog, keep firming your outer right hip in towards the midline. Not an easy task. 
And then after your third one, pause, look forward, come back to all fours, and then set your block down. One block at the front, one block at the back. From here, curl your toes under. Inhale, let your heart come forward into cow pose. Exhale, keep your heart and eyes forward, hips to heels, ears in between your arms, and go ahead and make your way into your downward facing dog. And then for this first one, if you want to pedal and wiggle around, feel free to do so. But I may invite you to be in stillness here because the practice will get pretty dynamic from here on out. And whether you're moving around or embracing stillness in the body, feel for your finger pads climb down into your mat, press the ridge of your palm forward and down. Just like you did in cow pose, lift your sitting bones up and widen them apart. See if you can keep that and then allow your heels to descend towards the earth. And then can you be a little more generous with your breath here? One more cycle of your breath. Press into your left foot on an inhale. Take your right leg high. Listen carefully. As you exhale, step your right foot outside your right hand. Inhale, step your left foot outside your left hand and come into this really wide forward fold at the top of your mat. Go ahead and grab a hold of opposite elbows. And you can bend into your knees as much as you need to. But get really clear as you press down through the mound of your big toe. And then do that same action that you were doing in downward facing dog, think to lift your sitting bones up, widen them apart, pull your belly in and deepen your fold. Let your head hang heavy and allow your breath to wash through your body. And then from here, release the grip of your hands, take a deep inhale breath. Turn your toes out a little bit and then come down into Malasana. You've got a block there if you want to sit in one. And then bring your upper arms to your inner thighs with your palms facing forward. Draw your shoulders back and widen your collarbones. Belly to spine, plant your right palm to the floor, pedal your right shoulder to the inner knee, and then inhale, stretch your left arm up to the sky. So you may feel this big stretch into your whole left side body. Keep your right shoulder moving down your back. Take one more full inhale, stretch up. And then as you exhale, cuddle your left shoulder to the inner left knee, plant the palm, left shoulder draws back, and then inhale, reach your right arm up to the sky. Smooth breath. So not only is it solstice today, but also it's International Yoga Day, so it just seems like the right thing to do to do a little yogi squat. So let's come back to center, hands at heart center this time. Let your head bow towards your fingertips and remember your intention for practice or borrowing from the universe. The universe works fast when I'm having fun. Take one more full inhale. Fingertips to the floor as you exhale, then lift your hips. Parallel your feet hip distance apart at the top of your mat and fold in. Halfway lift, breathe in. Bow forward, breathe out. Press down into your feet. Inhale, rise to stand. Bring your tailbone down as your heart and hands lift. Exhale, hinge at your hips, bow forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift and lengthen, halfway pause. Exhale, plant your hands to the floor, step your left leg back, draw your right knee into your chest. So essentially, keep the shape of plank pose and only your right leg and your breath will move. So from here, inhale, right leg back. Exhale, tap your right upper arm as high as you can. Inhale, send your leg back. We've got two more like that. Exhale to your right upper arm, belly to spine, press the floor away. One more time, inhale. And then exhale, meet your right upper arm and then pause. Here, slide your uh, knee down to your wrist. And then exhale, draw it all the way back up. Two more like that. Inhale, slowly down. Exhale, can you bring your right knee even higher? One more time, breathe in. Breathe out, pause. Inhale to a three-legged dog. Then roll your hips open. Keep your right leg straight today, though. So lift your right leg up as high as you can. Roll your hips open. And then perhaps soften your left ankle a little closer to the floor. 
So kind of like get a big starfish shake with your body here. Weigh your palms equally. And on your next inhale, square your hips right leg long. Exhale, bring your right knee to your right upper arm once again and pause. Don't worry, we're not going to do all that again. Look forward as you inhale. Then step your right foot outside your right hand as you exhale and lower your back knee down. So you're almost like in a low lunge position, but your hands are to the inner knees like you're going to do lizard pose, but we're not. And then maybe come to your fingertips if you want a little more space. And then we're going to flex the hamstrings from here. So take an inhale, look forward. Then exhale, dig your right heel into the floor, scoot your hips back. We'll flow here. Inhale, come back into your lunge. Exhale, hips back, dig your right heel into the ground. One more time, breathe in. Send your hips back, breathe out. Then inhale, step your right foot to the floor. Exhale, lift your back knee. Keep your left hand underneath your shoulder. Inhale, right arm reaches forward and up and move into a really spacious revolved twist here. So it's totally fine if your legs are a little wider than hip distance apart, but see if you can bring your right thigh parallel to the floor and pull your right hip back. With every inhale, send the crown of your head forward, and then exhale, twist, twist, twist to the right. One more big breath in. Keep the shape of your pose as you exhale, plant your left hand to the floor, side plank. Option one, your right foot is going to step halfway down your mat like so. Option two, you're gonna stack your legs together. Draw your left shoulder down your back and actively reach up with your right fingertips. One more big breath in. Stay for the breath out, then listen carefully. We're gonna switch sides. Inhale, reach your right arm forward. Plant your right hand to the mat. Commit to the outer edge of your right foot and then sweep your left arm to the back of the mat and reach your left arm up. Shoulder blades draw together. If you need the support, go ahead and step your left foot to the floor. Take one more deep breath in. Then as you exhale, stretch your left arm towards the front of your mat. Plant your hands shoulder distance apart. Take your feet hip distance apart. Inhale, send the crown of your head forward. Lower all the way to your belly as you exhale. Once you're down, bring the tops of your feet to the floor. Take your fingers a little wide. Inhale, rise to cobra pose, coming up only so much that your low back feels free. Exhale, draw your heart forward and down. So we'll flow here. Inhale, rise up. Keep your belly to your spine. Curl the chest up. Then keep squeezing your shoulder blades together even as you lower. So take that two more times. And not only keeping in mind here, to keep your lower back free, but in so many ways, that's really the goal of yoga is to get free from the constraints of both body and mind. And at the very bottom of your next exhale, lower all the way down to the floor. You're gonna form a little pillow with your hands, so stack your right hand on top of your left and bring your forehead down onto your mat. From here, bend your right knee and then pretend like your foot your right foot is going to step onto the ceiling. Anchor your tailbone down and then see if you can lift your right thigh up off the floor. Squeeze your inner thighs to the midline. See if you can get your right knee up a little bit higher. Belly to spine. So once again, feeling for the tone of your hamstrings. Lift your leg a little higher. Slowly lower it down. Extend your right leg. Bend into your left knee. Flex your foot. And then see if you can get your left thigh off the floor. Breathing here. See if you can bring it up a little bit higher. Keep your belly drawing in so the lumbar spine is supported here. A little bit higher and then slowly lower it down. Bend, keep your left leg where it is. Bend your right leg to meet your left knees and inner feet touch. Take an inhale, tailbone down. Exhale, lift your thighs. And I always find it so fascinating when you do both legs at the same time. It's like Hey, how come they're not going up as high? Keep squeezing them into the midline. Lift your thighs a little bit higher, up, 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 and then bring them down slowly. Extend your legs, but keep the inner feet to touch. Just one more here, big breath in. Just the legs lift, but lift them up at the same time and hold here. You're gonna keep your forehead on your palms, 
And now you can stay or lift up. So with your forehead on your palms, the back of your neck is just as long as the front of your throat. So keep that in mind for a little later. Lift your legs higher, lift your chest higher. Then from here, cactus your arms, squeeze your elbows together. Plant your palms beside your rib cage. Lift your legs, lift your chest, keep the chest lifting the tops of the feet down. Inhale, you stay here or straighten your arms to up dog, lift your heart. Down, we're facing dog, lift your hips and pause. So three breaths here or child's pose. Still your body, slow your mind. From your downward facing dog, inhale, rise to your toes, bend your knees, look forward, exhale, walk, step or hop, your big toes to touch at the top of your mat. Inhale, lift and lengthen, halfway up, exhale to fold. Belly to spine, inhale, rise to stand, in as much space as you can, reach up. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift and lengthen, pause, plant your hands, step your right leg back, Draw your left knee to your chest. Inhale, send your left leg back, shoulders stay forward. Exhale, left knee taps left upper arm. Inhale, leg back, stay on your right tippy toes. Exhale, left knee, left upper arm. Arms strong and straight, one more, inhale. Exhale, pause, then from here, inhale, left knee to left wrist, and then exhale, think of cat pose as you try to draw your knee a little higher. Two more, inhale, exhale, lift your knee, last one, inhale, exhale, hug high, can you lift your knee, pause, inhale, three-legged dog, keep your left leg straight, then roll your left hip on top of your right, but keep your shoulders parallel to the earth, spread your left toes wide and lift your leg high, keep squeezing your right hip in towards the midline, one more breath. Keeping your left leg long, inhale, square your hips, lift your inner thigh to the sky. Exhale, left knee to left upper arm and pause. Look forward, breathe in. Step your left foot outside your left hand, breathe out, and lower your right knee down. Inhale, our little hamstring floss, look forward. Exhale, dig your left heel into the floor and take a bow. You can always come to fingertips. Inhale, back to your lunge. Exhale, pull your hips back, flex your left foot towards the crown of your head. One more time, inhale, lunge, collarbones wide. Exhale, send your hips back. Then inhale, step your left foot to the floor. Exhale, lift your back knee, and then inhale, reach your left arm forward and all the way up towards the sky into your open twist. Draw your right shoulder into your upper back. And even though there's flexion of the left hip, so technically it's a bit of a forward fold, and there's a twist happening as you revolve to the left. Now add the essence of a back bend as you lift your heart away from your belly. Take one more full deep breath in. Twist a little deeper, breathe out. Then inhale, look down to the floor, plant your right hand underneath your shoulder, and come to your expression of Vashisthasana, either stepping your left foot to the floor or stacking your legs on top of one another. And then as you draw your shoulder blades towards one another, feel the upper arm bones plug into your shoulders. Then from your heart, expand back out, down your arms through your fingers. Big breath in, let's switch sides, left hand down, pivot to the outer edge of your right foot, and then right arm up. Breathe. You know, and that's the thing how this practice truly does become a moving meditation where we focus on the breath, allowing the breath to bring us into the present moment. And it's there in the present moment where we turn on the light of our own awareness. From here, inhale, reach your right arm overhead. Exhale, hand down, feet hip distance apart, plank pose. Inhale, look forward. Chaturanga or to your belly. Inhale to cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Just two breaths this time. Steady body, steady breath, 
steady mind. Inhale, rise to your toes, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, walk, sup or hop your big toes to touch at the top of your mat. Inhale to lift and lengthen. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rise to stand, Urdhvahasasana. Then as you exhale, bring your palms down the midline, arms beside you, Tadasana, Mountain Pose. So it is solstice, so the only right thing to do is a few rounds of starting on the scar A. Inhale, stretch for the sky, Urdhvahasasana. Exhale, we bow forward, not only to the sun, but also the light within. Inhale, stretch your heart forward, keep your eyes forward. Exhale, step or jump back, lower down halfway or all the way. Then inhale, breathe your heart up, shoulders back. Exhale to lift your hips. Three breaths here. Now as we start to move a little more dynamically, when we come to down dog or if you choose child's pose, embrace stillness in your body. Steady your eyes to one spot between your feet or up to your belly. Last breath here. Inhale, rise to your toes, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale to the top of your mat. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold, heavier head. Inhale, rise, Ardha Hastasana, hands shoulder distance apart. Exhale, palms down the midline and then beside your body. Again, inhale, reach and stretch up. Exhale, bow forward and in. Inhale, lengthen, look forward. Exhale, chaturanga, dissolve your breath. Then inhale to lift your chest, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Exhale to lift your hips. Pause here, inhale deeply. Exhale slowly. Take two more cycles of your breath at your own pace here. Inhale, rise to your toes, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale to the top of your mat. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rise up, arms shoulder distance apart. Exhale, bring your palms down the midline and then beside your body. One more, moving with breath. Inhale. Exhale. Empty out, heavy head. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, go back. Inhale. Exhale. Holding downward facing dog, three breaths, inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two, get longer in your body. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale, rise to your toes, bend your knees, look where you want to go, and then exhale, put your feet there. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rise, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Tadasana, your arms beside you, palms facing forward. Take a moment of stillness here. So the beautiful thing with Surya Namaskar, we always start and end in the same position. So we have that full cycle in the body, in nature, outside of ourselves, but also nature within. All right, so before we start to move along, you can stick with the traditional vinyasas or I'm gonna to start to layer it up a little bit and we'll move into our standing sequence. Bend your knees, inhale, Uttanasana to your pose. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift and lengthen, listen carefully. Exhale, as you step or jump back, lower down, chaturanga, keep your toes curled under. So inhale, you come to up dog with your toes curled under. Exhale, point your right toes back. Inhale, curl your chest up, knee to nose as you exhale. Inhale, three-legged downward facing dog, reach your right leg up. Exhale, knee to nose and pause. Look forward, breathe in. Step forward, breathe out, lower your back knee down. 
Hook your right thumb on top of your left leg. You're gonna make a butterfly shadow. Stretch your palms forward and up on Janiyasana. So for this low lunge, feel free to let your hips melt as low as they can. For today, I'm totally fine if your knee comes in front of your right ankle. But keep rooting your tailbone down. Draw your belly to your spine and with your thumbs hooked, lift yourself up out of your waist and pull your arm bones back into any degree of a back bend. So I'm gonna cue the arms a little bit more specifically today. From here, take one more full inhale. Keep your chest lifting as you exhale, backstroke your arms, bring your fingertips to frame your right foot, lift your back knee, spin your back foot to the floor like you've got a warrior two stance. So you've got your block there. If you wanna bring your right hand on your block outside your foot, reach your left arm behind you and then circle it all the way alongside your ear, extended side angle. Think to draw your right rib cage towards the left side of your mat. With every inhale from the outer edge of your left foot, stretch through your whole left side body. And then as you exhale, revolve your torso to the left. Keep standing down into your legs. Two more breaths. So from here, we're gonna to come to Skandasana. Start to reach your left fingertips to the floor. Warrior two, inhale, left arm reaches back, pulls you up. Reach your arms up, turn your left toes out. Come onto your right heel, come down to Skandasana. If you need the support, go ahead and bring your fingertips down onto the earth. Maybe your hands will come to heart. Dig your heel into the floor and keep a little softness in your right knee. Shoulders back. Big breath in and slow breath out. One more just like that. All right, from here, exhale, bring your fingertips to the floor. Turn to face the back of your mat. The left foot will be in front. Lower your right knee down. Hook your left thumb on top. And then from here, Anjaniyasana. Allow your hips to descend. Pull your left hip back. Bring your tailbone down, lift your fingertips up, and then invite a deeper opening into the front of your body as you contract your back body. So remember that feeling when we were on our belly doing those leg lifts. Here, can you feel the back of your neck just as long as the front of your throat? Take one more full inhale. Backstroke your arms as you exhale. Fingertips frame your front foot. Lift your back leg. Plant your right foot to the floor. You've got your block there if you need it. And then inhale, reach your right fingertips to the original front of your mat towards your right foot. And then stroke it all the way alongside your cheek. So big mandala with your arms. Similar to what we did with our legs. So lots of circles tonight. Wrap your left sitting bone underneath you and spin your heart towards the right. Keep drawing your left shoulder down your back. Take one more full breath in. Turn your left rib cage to the right as you breathe out. Then from here, sweep your right hand down to the floor. Inhale, rise to warrior two. Reach your arms up, skandasana. Bend into your right knee, dig your left heel into the floor. So you can always use your hands to support you here to come all the way down or just keep your hands at heart. Shoulders draw back. And then a little micro bend into your left knee. Two more cycles here. Take a big breath, fingertips to the floor, plant your hands onto the mat and step back to plank pose. Pause here, take a deep breath in. Chaturanga as you exhale, toes stay curled under. Inhale, lift your chest. This time as you exhale, left toes point back. Inhale, curl your heart up. Exhale, left knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog to your left leg up. Exhale, step your left foot in between your hands. Right foot meets your left foot. Fold forward at the top of your mat. Halfway lift, breathe in. Fold into yourself, breathe out. Press down into your feet. Inhale, rise to stand with your tailbone as your heart and hands lift. Exhale, hinge at your hips, bow forward, Uttanasana. So regular vinyasa, inhale, lift and lengthen. 
Exhale, chaturanga, step or jump back, dissolve your breath. And then inhale to your up dog. You can choose how you place your feet. Exhale, downward facing dog, and pause. Inhale deeply. Exhale slowly. From here, rise into your fingertips in your down dog. Start to walk your hands towards your feet so that you're all the way at the back of your mat. Then from here, your trusty peace fingers on your left hand are gonna hook onto your right big toe. Take, sorry, your left big toe. Left hand to left toe. We'll get you levitating next year, maybe next solstice. Right hand onto your right hip. Then rise onto your left tippy toes, a little bend into your right knee, and then with a straight leg or a bent leg, rise to stand. Pause here. Once you're stable, open up your leg to the side. So if you need to hold the knee, you hold the knee. But external rotation with your left leg. And then once you're steady or steady-ish, keep firming the outer right hip in, and then stretch your right arm up to the sky. Smooth breath in, and long breath out. Keep pressing through the mound of your right big toe. You're gonna keep your right leg exactly, left leg is exactly as you have it. And then inhale, left arm reaches up. Then from here, like a hip mandala, you're gonna circle your leg and your arms behind you, airplane pose. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Take a deep breath in, then fold forward into standing splits at the back of your mat. Lift your left leg as high as you can, fingertips to the floor. Then inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, walk your hands forward, and then bring your thumbs to touch when you're in a downward facing dog shape. Left leg is up. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, step your left foot outside your left hand. Pivot your back foot to the floor, and then rise to warrior two. So you might have a little bit of a wider stance here. Take a deep breath in. Lunge deeper, breathe out. Then inhale, extend your left leg, reach forward, palm to shin or hand outside your left leg and pause. Shoulder blades hug towards one another. And then from here, start to reach your right hand towards the back of your mat. A little bit of a circle here, half circle. And then inhale, reach your right arm so that your bicep is alongside your cheek and take a pause here. So feeling for that deep opening into your whole right side body. Press down through the mound of your left big toe. Take one more big breath in and stay for the breath out. Inhale, reach your right arm up. Look to the floor. You're gonna bring your walk with you if you have it and make your way into half moon. So take a moment to pause and find your balance. Anchor onto your left foot, keeping your right leg long, rolling right hip on top of your left. Then you're gonna keep the shape of your body and then reach your right arm forward. And if there was a clock in front of you where the direction of your left toes is 12 o'clock, you're gonna bring your right fingertips to the floor like it's 12 o'clock. And then your left hand is gonna come out to nine o'clock. So even though you're sort of facing down towards the earth, keep spinning your right hip on top of your left. Spread your right toes wide and lift your right leg as high as you can. Maybe walk your right fingertips a little further forward so you get that big stretch into your right side body. Belly to spine. Take one more deep breath in. And then as you exhale, standing forward fold at the top of your mat. Bring your feet hip distance apart and then bow into yourself. Ooh, feel into your right side. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale to fold. Press down into your feet. Inhale, rise to stand. Urdha Hastasana, arms shoulder distance apart. Exhale, bow forward and let it all go. Regular vinyasa, inhale, lift and lengthen. Chaturanga as you exhale. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. In your downward facing dog, rise to your fingertips. So you can feel weighted into your feet and then start to walk your hands towards your feet. So the left foot will stay down. Right piece, fingers and thumb will hook onto your right big toe. Take your left hand to your left hip, rise onto your right tippy toes. With a little softness in your left knee, slowly begin to rise up with a straight leg 
or a bent leg. And then once you're up, open up your leg to the side, wrap your right sitting bone underneath you, and then inhale, take your left arm up. So it's the same shape that we're doing in triangle pose, that variation of triangle, this is it here, but gravity is just saying hello, coming out to play. And then keeping your right leg out to the side, whether it's bent or straight, it's all good. Keep it there. Reach your right arm up. And then from here, you start to circle your right leg behind you, your arms behind you, make your way to airplane pose. And really do let your heart lead the way forward. And then from there, back forward into your standing splits. Inhale, lift your chest, look forward. Exhale, walk your hands forward so that your thumbs touch in your downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg higher. Exhale, step your right foot outside your right hand. Spin your back foot to the floor. Inhale, rise to warrior two. Exhale, move your right leg to straight, reach forward, triangle pose. Palm to shin or the block outside your right leg. So we're taking a little more space in the legs today. Draw your right hip back and see if you can get your side waist equally long. Then lean back. From here, start to reach your left hand towards the back of your mat. Then a little half circle. Inhale, reach your left arm forward until your bicep is alongside your cheek and take a few good breaths here. So again, it's very similar to that star-shaped pose where the limbs are nice and long. And as you tone the muscles of your arms and legs and draw them into the core of your body, at the same time, from your center, reach through your arms and legs. Press into your right big toe. Then from here, inhale, reach your left arm up. Look to the floor as you exhale. Go ahead and make your way into half moon. So spinning left hip on top of your right. Tone your outer right hip into the midline. Then you're gonna keep the shape of your body. Reach your left arm overhead. So again, imagine that there was a clock in front of you. 12 o'clock is directly forward. Your left hand is at 12 o'clock. Then take your right fingertips out at three o'clock. And as you spin, you're trying to look underneath your left arm. You get this big stretch into your whole left side body. Lift your left leg up. Keep breathing, two more cycles here. Lift your left leg up a little higher and then slowly step to Uttanasana, feet hip distance apart and fold inwards, let your head be heavy. Halfway lift, inhale. Bow into yourself, heavier head, exhale. Press down into your feet, inhale, rise to stand, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hinge at your hips, bow forward, Uttanasana. Halfway lift, inhale. Chaturanga as you exhale, step or jump back and dissolve your breath. Keep your toes curled under this time. Inhale to upward facing dog. Right toes point back as you exhale. Then buoy the heart up, breathe in. Knee to nose, breathe out. Inhale, three-legged dog, right leg high. Exhale, step your right foot forward, crescent pose. Inhale, rise all the way up, full stretch. Then as you exhale, cactus your arms and take a little bend into your back knee. Root your tailbone down, and with your elbows, think to spin your elbows forward so that you're externally rotating your upper arm, the elbows are forward. Then draw your chin back and then start to curl your chest up to any degree of a back bend. And then can you keep the back of your neck just as long as the front of your throat? Pull your right hip back. Take a deep inhale. Lunge deeper, exhale. Maybe move your left leg towards straight and maybe move your arms towards straight alongside your ears. Take one more full deep breath in. Belly to spine, exhale. Bring your fingertips to frame your front foot. Bring your back knee down. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, Ardha Hanumanasana. Dig your right heel into the floor. Then inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale to fold. So option one is here. Option two, lift your chest. Inch your right foot forward. And then your left leg back. So you have one block within reach. If you want a little bit more support, 
Go ahead and bring your block on any height underneath your right sitting bone and then lift your chest so that your hands can come to your hips. So if you're in the half forward fold, you stay there, but if you're moving a little bit deeper with your legs wider apart, keep a micro bend into your right knee, tailbone down. Either holding here or inhale, reach your arms up. Full breath in and deep breath out. And as you're holding, if you need to change the orientation of your block or take it away entirely, then feel free to move around so that you are finding your deepest expression of this pose. And the deepest expression is where you can breathe with ease, not the one where you're thinking, when is this one gonna be over? This is a big pose, Hanumanasana. It takes a lot of courage to hold the stillness. You take a big leap, splitting your legs nice and long. Three more breaths. Keep squeezing your inner thighs to the midline. Take one more full inhale breath. And then as you exhale, bring your fingertips to the floor and then slowly make your way to downward facing dog, setting your block off to the side if you had it. And then taking a pause. Easy breath in, full breath out. From here, you can stay or rise to your tippy toes. Inhale, ripple your spine forward to plank, look forward. Exhale, chaturanga. Keep your toes curled under. Inhale to up dog. As you exhale, point your left toes back. Belly to spine, inhale, heart high. Knee to nose, breathe out. Inhale, three-legged dog, take your leg high. Exhale, step your left foot forward, rise to crescent pose. Inhale, press down into the earth and stretch your arms up. Then as you exhale, lunge deeper, take a bend into your back knee. And so the bend in the back knee, stay in your pose just a moment, is that so we don't compensate and overarch into our, back, our lumbar spine, but that as you put your tailbone down, the front of your hips lift and you feel your lower abdominals begin to support the lower back. Then from there, Cactus out your arms, spin your elbows forward so you feel your shoulder blades slide together and down your back. Then from there, pull your left hip back, right hip forward. With your belly to spine, begin to curl your chest up. So your elbows are kind of pointing the way for the direction of your heart. Keep the back of your neck just as long as the front of your throat. With your belly to your spine, Keep squeezing your legs to the midline. Take a deep inhale, lunge deeper, exhale. Then maybe you stay here or straighten your back leg and straighten your arms. Taking crescent pose into a bit of a back bend. Draw the outer right hip forward, left hip back. One more full inhale, go deeper, exhale. And then slowly let your fingertips frame your front foot, bring your back knee down. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, scoot your hips back. Dig your left heel into the floor. Inhale, lift your chest. And then exhale to fold. So option one is to stay here. Option two, lift your chest. And it doesn't matter if your feet come just like a centimeter further apart. You gotta start where you are, one step at a time. And then maybe you stay there or you inch your right and back. Left heel forward. Right heel back and you keep going. You have your block, you can put it on any height you choose. So that the next stage is to keep the shoulders as best you can above your hips. If you can, place the top of your right foot to the floor or keep your toes curled under all good. With a softness in your right knee no matter where you're at. And then always an option to take the arms up alongside your ears. And so remember that low lunge we did earlier where our thumbs were hooked. You can even do that here to really lift yourself up out of your waist so that as you ground down through your legs, you're also rising up through the torso. Smooth breath, easy breath in, and easy breath out. Work to square the hips forward. So from the left heel digging into the earth, you're pulling your left hip back, right hip forward. About three more breaths here. So the strengthening at the beginning, the stretching here, 
always working with stability and freedom so that we find that center point of stillness. One more full inhale to reach up and then exhale, slowly begin to release. Go ahead and make your way into downward facing dog, setting your block off to the side. And then once you're in downward facing dog, take a pause. You're welcome to hold here or one last vinyasa. Inhale, ripple forward to your high plank. Exhale, chaturanga. And then your, your back bend, cobra or up dog as you prefer your feet. Downward facing dog, lift your hips up and back. Pausing in downward facing dog or child's pose, three breaths. One more full inhale. Come to tabletop as you exhale, all fours. Cross your ankles, have a seat, and extend your legs forward. All right, from here, we're gonna stay pretty low to the ground. Grab your block on the low rise weight and place it between your shins, your lower legs. And then from here with your feet near to the top of your mat, squeeze your legs together and reach your arms forward. Take a full deep breath in, and then slowly roll down one vertebrae at a time. So gently placing the spine down. Once your shoulders arrive, then the head, and then the arms alongside your body, and then walk your feet in so your ankles are directly underneath your knees. Lift your chin away from your chest for bridge pose. Keep the block between your shins. On your next inhale, lift your hips. And then you can hold the edges of your mat if you choose, or go ahead and interlock your fingers. Stand down into your heels and pretend like you wanna pull them up towards your shoulders. Once again, so you feel the strength, the tone of the back of your legs. So your hamstrings are some of the muscles that are involved in extending your leg at the hip that creates that back bend leg position. So we need them strong to do that, but also the front of the hip open. Keep squeezing the block with your shins and notice the quality of your lower body. So how much the legs are working to squeeze to the midline. Yes, your butt should be engaged here. Hamstrings strong, two more breaths. Take an inhale, lift your hips, and then exhale, slowly lower down. Release the grip of your hands. Then set your block off to the side. But even though the block is gone, remember the feeling and the connection into your lower body. And then we're gonna use that connection of the lower body to expand our upper body a little more. So from here, one option is to head to bridge pose just like you did, or I'm gonna add on another layer for wheel pose. With your chin lifting away from your chest, inhale, begin to lift your hips. Either interlock your fingers to bridge or put your hands underneath your shoulders. Then roll your shoulders down your back so it's almost like that cactus shape with your arms and crescent pose. Then first stage, inhale, lightly lift to the crown of your head. Roll your shoulders down your back. You can breathe here or go ahead and extend your arms or Vidanyarasana. So when you have the block between your shins, see if you can find that same magnetism here. And then whether you are in bridge pose or wheel, stand down onto your right leg, hug your left knee into your chest, and then send your left leg skyward. Big breath into your chest. See if you can straighten your left leg if it's up in the air. Then bend your knee into your chest, left foot steps down. Exhale, right knee to your chest, and then right knee to the, leg to the sky. See if you can calm your breath, whichever expression of this back bend you're in. If your right leg is up, straighten it as much as you can. And then if your right leg is up, draw your knee to your chest, return both feet to the floor, three more breaths. You can do it, stay with it. Smooth and slow your breath. 
If you're in wheel, chin to chest, slowly lower to your shoulders, and then lower down, bring your arms alongside your body, palms face up, and be still. Feel all the feels here. So for those of you who regularly practice wheel pose, I invite you to add on one more breath when you're practicing to see if you can hold it a little longer because the long holds in wheel pose are very powerful. Then we take a moment here of stillness and we just feel that even though the outer body is still, there's so much happening in the inner body. One more deep breath in, and then on an exhale, very gently draw your knees to your chest and maybe rock from side to side. And then belly to spine, pass through center, hold. Lift your forehead up towards your knees, keep the inner feet and the inner knees connected, and then extend your legs and your arms forward, hold here. Just a little counter pose for your lower back. Take a deep breath in. Navasana, bent knees or straight legs, you choose. Again, just a counter pose for your lower back. One more breath. And then from here, cross your ankles and have a seat. Keep your left leg just like it is in Sukhasana. And then pick up your right leg with your foot. Your knee is bent. I'm just gonna turn it a little bit of a diagonal here. And then kind of like you're drawing a bow and arrow. Draw your right knee back with your hand still holding your foot, send your foot directly forward. Just like we were flossing the hamstrings earlier, do that again one more time. Send the knee back a little further and then press through the mound of your right big toe forward. Option one, you hold here. Option two, draw your leg back. And then from here, take your right arm. I was like, what arm is that? <laughs> it's mine, the right arm. Underneath your right leg, take your left hand to the outer foot. Roll your right shoulder on your back. Kickstand your right fingertips to the floor and then push your right foot into your left hand. Maybe you hold here or begin to turn your chest to look underneath your left arm for sundial pose. So the upper body, it's a very similar shape that we did in the variation of half moon today. Keep your right shoulder pressing into your right leg. Take two more breaths. And so you can hold here or one more layer. You're gonna re-bend your right leg and you might need to lift it a little higher up onto your right shoulder. Plant your right hand to the floor. Put your left hand to the floor, lift your left leg up, cross your ankles, and then like a little clamshell, squeeze your knees together and lift your hips. Maybe shoot your legs out to the side for crazy eight pose, Ashtavakrasana. So your arms are in Chaturanga, pressing through the inner hands. Squeeze the inner thighs strong to the midline. And then from here, inhale, lift your chest, bring your hips down and unravel the craziness. Give your arms and legs a shake. Then sit cross-legged to start. Keep your right leg where you have it. And then you're gonna hold your left foot with your hands. And then from here, you bring your knee back so it comes to the outside of your left shoulder. And then press your left leg in front of you. Two more times, draw the left knee back and then press it forward. Either hold here or draw the knee back. Hold your ankle with your right hand so you can weave your left shoulder underneath your left leg. Then you swap the grip to hold the outer left foot. Roll your left shoulder on your back, tent your left fingertips to the floor, and then there's a little push-pull with your hand and foot. So as you start to kick your foot away from you, your arm is pulling it back. And then can you rotate your body to have a look underneath your right arm? So big right side body stretch. Two more breaths, keep your left shoulder moving back and let your breath create the lightness from within. 
Option is to hold here or adding the arm balance. Start to bend your left leg. See if you can get it a little higher up onto your arm and then squeeze your leg onto your upper arm. Plant your hands beside your hips. Then when you lift your right leg up, right angle on top of left, squeeze the inner thighs together. Keep squeezing them as much as you can. Take an inhale and then exhale, lift your hips. And it's just kind of fun to swing here a little. Or from here, as you send your legs out to the left, you bend your elbows, keep squeezing the inner thighs to the midline. Ashtabhakrasana, shoulders on your back body. Breath fluid and free. From here, lift your chest and then unravel all the crazy. Shake out your legs, shake out your arms. And then with your heels near to the front of your mat, Sit on your hands with your fingers forward. Gather your elbows in, inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, lower your forearms to your mat. Inhale, lift your chest, either hold here or very lightly bring the crown of your head to the floor. With your mouth closed, breathe deeply through your nose. Feel for the big stretch to the front of your throat your center of self-expression and communication. And then on your next exhale, chin to chest, roll onto your back. Release your hands from underneath you. And then if there's any final shapes that you need before Shavasana, feel free to do those shapes. Otherwise, consciously place yourself down. And of course, Shavasana is a great pose you can bring the soles of your feet to connect in Vatakanasana on your back if you choose. Or if you prefer to finish your practice in a seated meditation, go ahead and rise to a seat. And if you are closing seated, I'm going to invite you to sit on a block so that as the hips are elevated above the knees, it just helps find more ease. And whichever shape you've chosen, just kind of get all of your little wiggles and fidgets out of the way so that you can move to stillness. If you are seated, let your palms rest comfortably on your lap. And then either let the front of your eyes close or let them steady to a spot very softly in front of you. And then wherever you are within the cycle of your breath. When the arrival of your next exhale surfaces, let your exhale get a little heavier and deeper. And if it's helpful, you can even sigh out of your mouth and let it go. And for just a few moments, just like for a few moments today where the sun and the moon come into perfect stillness for a moment. Let your whole being come into stillness. You know, in light of the solstice of this day, of the longest hours of daylight and the shortest hours of darkness, Not only is it a moment to recognize that we honor the light, but also the dark. And it is not only the sun, you know, the source of light that is outside of ourselves, but also the source of light within. And that candle is always burning, always burning brightly. Sometimes we just have to clear away the dust in order for the inner light to shine a little brighter. And in order for there to be light, we need darkness to see that sparkle. So as we move through the cycles of the season, the cycles of nature, The cycles within our bodies, even sun salutations on our mat. 
the cycles of the breath. There is this quality of flow. And when we can get into that idea of flow, we can find a little more freedom. And just like we need both the light and the dark, and the inhale and the exhale, strength and flexibility, stability and freedom. And when we can marry those two opposing energies, to that center point of stillness where we come into balance, well, that's where we get free. So let your body be exactly as it is, exactly where it is. As you embrace stillness on the outside, feel for the freedom on the inside. And perhaps the light of your own awareness will illuminate a little corner of darkness. And I don't mean darkness in a bad way, but just illuminating perhaps something you didn't see before. listening to the playlist, just like as the track suggests, repeat to yourself, I am the light. Take a breath in. Offer a breath out. And if you are on your back, take a few breaths to make your way to a tall seat. Once you arrive to your tall seat, feel for the length of your spine. And sense into that center point where your head is balanced evenly above your heart. And then fold your palms in front of your heart center and bow your head into light of your heart and into the light of your own understanding and awareness within. And may that light within illuminate your path forward. From my heart to yours, namaste. so much yogis happy solstice remember the universe works best when i'm having fun <laughs>